The 21st century has brought with it great opportunities, but it has also come with its own set of challenges. While some parts of the world are islands of growing economic prosperity, others are mired in conflicts. In Asia, the absence of an agreed security architecture creates uncertainty. Threats of terror are expanding and new challenges are emerging in cyber and outer space. And global institutions conceived in 20th century seem unable to cope with new challenges or take on new responsibilities. In this world of multiple transitions and economic opportunities, growing uncertainties and political complexities, existing threats and new challenges. Our engagement can make a difference by promoting cooperation, not dominance, connectivity, not isolation, inclusive, not exclusive mechanisms, respect for global commons, and above all, for international rules and norms. India is already assuming her responsibilities in securing the Indian Ocean region. A strong India-US partnership can anchor peace, prosperity, and stability from Asia to Africa and from Indian Ocean to the Pacific. It can also help ensure security of the sea lanes of commerce and freedom of navigation on seas. But the effectiveness of our cooperation would increase if international institutions frame with the mindset of the 20th century where they reflect the realistic of today. Mr. Speaker, before arriving in Washington, D.C., I had visited Herat in western Afghanistan to inaugurate Afghan-India Friendship Dam built with Indian assistance. I was also there on the Christmas Day last year to dedicate to that proud nation, its parliament, a testimony to our democratic ties. <laughs> Afghans naturally recognize that the sacrifices of America have helped create a better life. But your contribution in keeping the region safe and secure is deeply appreciated by even beyond. And India, too, has made an enormous contribution and sacrifices to support our friendship with Afghan people. A commitment to rebuild a peaceful and stable and prosperous Afghanistan is our shared objective. Eight distinguished members, not just in Afghanistan, but elsewhere in South Asia and globally, terrorism remains the biggest threat. In the territory, in the territory 
stretching from west of India's border up, up to Africa. It may go by different names from lashkar e taiba to Taliban to ISIS, but its philosophy is common of hate, murder, and violence. Although it is a shadow is spreading across the world, it is incubated in India's neighborhood. I commend the members of the U.S. Congress for sending a clear message to those who preach and practice terrorism for political gains. <laughs> Refusing the reward them is the first step towards holding them accountable for their actions. The fight against terrorism has to be fought at many levels, and the traditional tools of military intelligence or diplomacy alone would not be able to win this fight. Mr. Speaker, we have both lost civilians and soldiers in combating terrorism. The need of the hour is for us to deepen our security cooperation and base it on a policy that isolates those who harbor, support, and sponsor terrorists. <laughs> that does not distinguish between good and bad terrorists, and that de-links religion from terrorism. <laughs> also for us to succeed, those who believe in humanity must come together to fight for it as one and speak against this menace in one voice. Terrorism must be delegitimized. 